Welcome in. It is round two of the NFR. This is the X Mark Rodeo pre show here on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And Mike, let's start in the bareback riding. Rocker Steiner brought the electricity last night, an 87 point ride to get things going. Jess Pope also picks up a cat check. Clayton Biglow does as well. Keenan Hayes a small check, but things a little, little tighter than they were when Keenan Hayes had that big, big lead entering. Yeah, how exciting was that round? Rocker Steiner, obviously, with a huge celebration after. You're going to see that a lot if he gets more checks here at the NFR. But Keenan Hayes, it was was his first out ever at the NFR. He does get a check, which no matter how big or small it is, it's important he gets a check. It's important he stays alive in the average. He does have that big lead, but we did see it shrink a little bit. Rocker up to third. Now you got Clayton, obviously, as well. So there's a lot of big names. Jess Pope's the guy who's going to put on a lot of pressure. But yeah, Rocker was electric in day one. Yeah, I think maybe the most underreported storyline in that is that Jess Pope was 85 yep. points. He's right in the mix in the average. It's kind of what he averages for the entire NFR for the past three years. Again, he keeps that pace there. Speaking of keeping the pace, Dalton Massey completely broke the yep. pace as the last Cowboy out. It felt like that was going to be Tyler Wagusbacks to lose. He goes 3.8 seconds, and then Dalton Massey right on top of him, 3.5. Rodeo Houston champion enters number one, extends that lead in a big, big way. Yeah, a really impressive performance there. We said it was his first out for Keenan Hayes, first out for Dalton as well, and first out, he's at number one. We've said it all year. When does the crack show? And it just hasn't shown yet. The pressure was apply applied by Tyler Wagusback, and it will be throughout the the rodeo but he survived that first test in a really big way too because not only did he strike back but he extended his lead in the world standings as well so a lot yet to be determined but the first the first test passed with flying colors for Dalton yeah absolutely on to the team roping Quinn Summers and Jake Long last night they entered not really in that world title mm -hmm. picture but the team roping was so close that Jake Long goes from number 10 to number four Quinn Summers goes from number 13 to number seven really interesting about Quinn Summers too he has the horse of the year did not ride the horse of the year last night though yeah really interesting you know he, he's got a different horse he likes in these short compact arenas that's what he's going to ride throughout the NFR and how nice of a spot to be in when you have the horse of the year. You don't got to ride him at the NFR as well, but that's what we're going to see in both sides of Team Rope is we're going to see a lot of standings jumbling because the, everybody is so close. We're all within that average as well, but man, they knew they had to go out and beat a 4-3. What do they do? They go 4.2 seconds to get the round win. A really impressive opening round for the two. And we heard it. We heard them talk about it. We talked about it in the Bulldogging. The start, the start, yep. the start. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about it. They talk about it the entire time at the Thomas and Mac. It's just a little different here. You have to feel like you are breaking Making the barrier in order to be on time. So we'll see how they fare on that. But that, like you said, that's why he brings out transmission, that 19-year-old horse Clint Summers does as the header there. Saddle bronc riding now. This is the event where things really, really started to started to get interesting, started to feel like an NFR, started to feel like there were world titles that were going to be won and lost. Stetson Wright gets reported on WSR about an hour beforehand that he's having surgery on that hamstring. Then he goes and get bucked, gets bucked off. He also does in the Bulls, but in Saddle Bronc. He gets bucked off. He has a small lead. It's not only him getting bucked off, it's who goes on to win the round. Cade Bruno and Zeke Thurston share it. Yeah, you got a new number one in Cade Bruno, and this is going to be storyline throughout. This is the storyline throughout, obviously, in Saddlebrunk and bull riding because of Stetson Wright and that injury. It is very clear that it is, it is impacting him. And, you know, you got to imagine what's left in the tank for Stetson. It seems like it's a pain tolerance situation. If that's all it is, I like Stetson's chances to get a couple of paychecks. But you got a new number one in Saddlebrunk riding in Cade Bruno, and I promise you, Zeke Thurston is sitting there in the wing saying this is my chance to make a big move he went 10 for 10 last year that's going to be big Stetson Wright was 9 of 10 last year that's the big difference Zeke won the average Zeke won the world you're going to really see a back and forth if Cade and Zeke both go 10 for 10 it's going to be a lot of fun to watch for the next nine rounds only three Bronc riders did that yep. last year that's also something to watch title roping a couple guys who came from the back of the pack mm -hmm. last night John Douch number one at 7-7 seven, seven. Blaine Cox at 7-9 whole bunch of guys in that eight second range kind of feeling it out like we said no one really blew that barrier out on there a lot of sub nine seconds but not not a lot of real movement yep. at the top in the tie down roping the one thing i will watch a lot of guys had trouble with the, with calves going left so that's something to point out see what see who's got those leftward deep calves today. and we saw a lot of second ropes come into play last night that was very important for some people and let's bring this up to shad mayfield he could have won the round last night he had a perfect rope he had a perfect catch just missed it when he was going for the tie again he could have been seven two seven three we heard it last night on the broadcast man that was a great calf for him to rope just barely made one little mistake 
mistake, and that's kind of been the theme for Shad. But again, Riley Webb, he catches, he stays alive in the average as well. That's all he's got to worry about too, because he does have a pretty healthy lead right now. But again, a lot of big names. Caleb Smith, he was he wasn't clean last night, but he did catch, he did stay alive in the average as well. That's going to come into play. Yeah, Caleb had to pack that second rope yep. in order to do it. So he's got a, he's got a lot of work to do, but he's a guy who can make up. That ground there, barrel racing. Now, Brittany Posey Tanazi, top of the ground. She ends up second. Sissy Wynn wins the round. But the real story is that Brittany Posey Tanazi enters with that huge lead and continues to extend that lead. Well, and the big thing here is you had you had several barrels knocked. You had Haley Kinzel knock a barrel. You had Emily Beisel knock a barrel. You had so Wenda Johnson. I mean, all of these people you expect to go potentially nine or ten for ten. You're seeing a lot of knocked barrels, more so than we see. We saw seven last night. We saw one a year ago. And it's big names doing it now. The big thing for the race is Jordan Briggs was clean as well. So that's obviously really important, speaking of that average. But right now, if you're Brittany Posey Tanazi, I think after you saw all the barrels drop last night, you're thinking, if I go 10 for 10 without knocking a barrel, I likely have a gold buckle. Yeah, absolutely. Someone that we thought likely had a gold buckle was Stetson Wright in the yep. bull riding. Entered with a lead of over $100,000 on both Kai Hamilton and Josh Frost. Same story as it was in the Bronx riding, though. Stetson gets bucked off, gets whipped off in 1.38 seconds. You never see that. And then Kai Hamilton wins the round. Josh Frost wins the round. Nine guys ride. Again, I say it, I said it a lot. That's very interesting. Now, this is no longer a foregone conclusion. Yeah, you know, and honestly, again, for Stetson, it's just about trying to get as many checks as possible because he's almost certainly not going to win that average with that torn hamstring. It's a really big issue. So if you're Josh or Kai, those are likely the two guys who are going to be who are going to be able to catch Stetson up top. You're probably going to have your gold buckle in those three. You got Tristan Hutchings, Trey Holson as well, kind of hanging around that $200,000 mark. But this becomes very interesting. If it happens again tonight and Stetson gets bucked off and you see Josh and Kai at the top, all of a sudden you're saying that $100,000 lead is, you know, $50,000, $60,000. And we know ground money always comes into play. Didn't last night, obviously, with so many qualified rides. But, man, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch because Stetson is very, very badly hurt. But again, it's Stetson right. Would it surprise you if he goes 90 points tonight? Because it wouldn't surprise me. The last thing I will say, Sage Kimsey, 82 and a half yep. points. But Sage Kimsey is healthy. Stetson right, mm -hmm. not healthy. Sage Kimsey could have eaten his breakfast today on that yep. ball. That's how easy he made it look. That is your round two preview right around the corner on the Cowboy Channel. It's coming up only on the Cowboy Channel and the Cowboy Channel Plus app.